In this video, we will solve failure criteria problem. Problem number one. Well, in a part, a crit the critical point is found and the stresses at this critical point is determined as sigma x equals to 70 megapascals, sigma y and the 20 and tau xy is 60. Question is, check the factor of safety according to Tresca and from Mises criteria. And besides, the yield strength of the materials is also given. First of all, well, we know the stress state. We have to determine the principal stresses in this plane stress condition. Well, for this, we can, for example, use the Mohr circle, but here, well, we have a formula giving me the principal stresses in the plane. So sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy are known. Well, if you use these numerical values, you find that the, the principal stresses in the surface are 160 and 30. But we know that there is a third principal stress which is perpendicular to the screen, and that is, is zero. So the, these principal stresses, considering also the third stress, then the largest one is 160, the smallest one is sigma three zero, and that one is sigma two. And these are now my principal stresses. Now I can apply the failure criteria. Having this is the Tresca says, well, the equivalent in Tresca is sigma one minus sigma three. And if this difference exceeds the yield strength of the material, we may have failure you see 160 minus zero gives you 160 and the yield strength is only 150 so tresca tells me there will be failure mises well this is the relation and the equation for the equivalent stress can be calculated and should be compared with the yield strength of the material. So this expression gives you 147 if you use these numerical values. And as you see this time, 147 is smaller than 150. And for Mises says no failure. So this is a nice example where Tresca and Formesis have different results. That, while these two criteria may give different results, well, we know that the Tresca is always on the safe side. You see, Tresca says failure, well, Formesis says it's okay. And, well, these differences can be up to 15%. Okay, the second problem, we have a pipe, the diameter is 100 millimeter, the thickness is 18, the thickness is 18, so the inner, inner diameter will be 64. Well, the yield strength of the material is given, it's a ductile material, 150 megapascals, and Point A is where we have to calculate the stress state. And if we find the stresses in the next step, we have to draw the Mohr circle and determine the principal stresses. And in the last step, we have to use the Tresca criteria and find the factor of safety. So let's do it. This is my pipe. And this critical section we cut here. And this blue 
section is where my point A is. Okay, this is my axis. Well, let's try to find the internal loadings in this critical section. We have, a, let's say, a normal force compression, 7,200. And well, I will not write down the equilibrium equation, so I will just give you the results in order to save time. So in this cut surface, there must be a normal stress also 7,200 Newton compression in order to earn an equilibrium. You can find this, of course, when you write sigma fx is equal to zero. And then we have a shear. Well, you see that is 3,700. And for equilibrium, we, might, we will have a shear over here, 3,700. Then we have a torque, a torque which tries to twist this shaft in this direction, well, we will have equilibrium torque in my section, also having the same value, 4,000 Newton. And as a last consideration, let's take this force and this force is trying to bend this axis, you know, in this direction. This force applies a bending moment, and this bending moment can be calculated by taking this force and multiplying it with this moment arm. So we are trying to bend like this, and this bending moment is that 3,700 times 270 millimeters. So at the end, we have the internal loadings in our section where we cut. Well, this is my section and my point A. These are the section properties, section area, moment of inertia, polar moment of inertia, which I will use for portion calculations. And we have these internal loadings. Now, I have to find the stresses developed with the effect of these internal loadings. Well, let's start with the normal stress. In point A, there will be a normal stress in this direction due to bending, due to the bending moment. So at this surface, there will be tension. So when you bend like this in point A, you will have tension. This is the bending. And besides, you apply a normal force, and this force will also cause normal stress and since we have negative force that means compression the stress will be also negative you can calculate the values using the numericals so here you have the acting compressive force the area this is your bending moment this is the the distance of the point a to the neutral axis, and that one is my of inertia. So this stress is due to compression. This stress is due to bending. And by superposing these two stresses, I found 10.69. What about shear stresses? Well, you know, we have here, here we have a shear stress and here we have a shear stress in which direction? In this direction. So this is my point A. And when you have a shear stress, the shear, when you have a shear force, the shear stress distribution will look like this. On the neutral axis, maximum tau, 
on the surface is zero. So my point A is on the surface. So no shear stress due to shear force. Why? We are on the surface. But we have a torque. Torque will cause a shear stress, which you can calculate by torque times the radius divided by the polar moment of inertia. That's 24.5. So the torque will be in this direction. So your uh, shear force will be in this direction. So we have the stresses and we go and try to draw the Mohr circle, which is asked. I have sigma x is 10.69 and tau xy is 4.5. All these are in megapascals and sigma y equal to sigma y equals to zero. Well, for the center of the Mohr circle, the average is 5. Three, five. This is where the center of the Mohr circle lies. Then, yes, so you have the relation. So you put the values in, and this is the radius. And next step, you draw the Mohr circle. But to be sure that this Mohr circle is correct, I check whether my points are on the circle. So I have calculated the stress state as 10.69, and that was 24.57, and here was sigma y equals to zero. So, as you know, this surface is represented by this point, and this surface is represented by this point. I can easily see that by using the center and the radius, well, I can draw the Mohr circle, and when I check my points lie on the Mohr circle, I'm 100% sure that this drawing is correct. Next, I have to determine the principal stresses, where you see in plane stress condition, these two are my principal stresses. This one, 5 plus the radius, 5 plus the radius, and this one, 5 minus the radius, 5 minus the radius. These are my principal stresses in the plane. I know perpendicular to the plane, we have a third principal stress, so I have to use my subscripts according to their values. Well, this one is sigma 1, the largest one. This one is sigma 3, the smallest one here. That one is sigma 2. So I have drawn more circle and determine the principal stresses. Use stress cut. Sigma 1 minus sigma 3 should be equal to sigma yield or sigma yield divided by a factor of safety. So if you put, you know the yield strength and you know the principal stresses, you can determine with the help of this formula, the factor of safety. And as you see, put the numerical values, your factor of safety is 2.98. This video, we solved two failure criteria application problems. Thank you for listening.